Let's do at least one more of these problems. <clears throat> I actually expanded it out a little bit from between the last video and now. I realized that we did something in class um, and that, that it that really leads up to the problem I, I showed before. Um, we, I've already shown you a, uh, a pretty deep reason why d of df should be zero, and that was change of variables. The df really kind of morally doesn't have anything, isn't really different from dx, which was clearly constant. And so what this one thing this shows you is that even though I was encouraging us to use our calculus intuition that the derivative of a constant should be zero, and that's still quite true in, in, with this version of derivatives, um, it's not, the converse isn't true. The, just because just the derivative of something is zero doesn't mean it's constant. df can be a very interesting one form. It's the analog of the gradient. So it could be any, the analog, <coughs> in fact, the tilde, to use this notation up here, of any gradient vector field, any conservative vector field. And those are always going to have d equals zero. So that's important to remember. But I just want to point out that there's, we can actually have a very calculational uh, justification for d of df equals zero. Um, well, we, there's a couple ways to do it. The kind of long way to do it, which is very worthwhile, is to just put in f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z, the partials of f uh, with respect to x, y, and z into this here, put it into here, and you get, uh, and then Clairaut's theorem comes into play. Let me just, without doing it out um, completely explicitly, because it takes a little a minute, let me just put that in. You get f sub z, y, f sub y, z, you get f sub xz, f sub zx, and you get f sub yx, f sub xy. This should be very familiar if you've proved or seen in a book the proof that the curl of the gradient is zero, because it's essentially the same calculation. Um, so this is equal to zero. And I just want to point out a very general fact that's going to help us understand why this is, is true in, in great generality. Um, and that's the, the commutativity of Clairaut's theorem. The fact that these guys are equal, the order of derivatives doesn't matter, is interacting with the anti-commutativity of dy, dy and dz. Remember where these, these minus signs came from. They came from the fact that, for example, dz wedge dx and dx wedge dz are opposite to each other. And so anytime you have something that's purely anti-commutative, like these one forms, interacting with something that's purely commutative, like derivatives, according to Clairaut's theorem, you're like liable to get zero, and that's exactly what happens here. Okay, if we wanted the um, sort of the cheap way to show this, uh, you we we could use the fact that the curl of grad of f is equal to zero. If we already just know that and we just want to use that, well, that's a good illustration of using this notation. The things with like the the tildes and the stars, we have to just say instead of saying, oh, I think it's analogous to that, we have to make it precise. So let's just kind of start out with d df, d of df equals, okay, well, df can be thought of as the gradient. What, is, what does it mean, thought of? Oh, it means the tilde of grad f. So it's going to be d of the tilde of grad f. I don't really need, yeah, I don't really need the extra parentheses. Okay, and now this means take function, turn it into a vector field, the gradient, then turn it into a one form, because that's really the better way to think about it, then let d act on the one form. Oh, but we have something that if we've taken a vector field, here it was just called a generic field of vector field f, and we tilde it, think of it as a one form, and do it a d of it, oh, that's the same thing as if we had taken the curl of the original vector field and turned it into a two form. Okay. And again, this is all just kind of translating back and forth. It can, if your eyes start to glo gloss, uh, glaze over uh, at the stars and things, all we're doing is we're making, oops, I don't really want the tilde. We're making this official with the notation. So d of tilde of something is the curl of whatever was inside the tilde, the original vector field, and then star the whole thing, turn it into a two form at the end. But hey, look, we know that curl grad f is zero, and so that's zero. Okay, so that's one way, another way to do it. And it sort of shows how the tildes and stars work. Okay, what about uh, if you start with a one form, and you make it a two form, and then you make it a three form by taking d of it? I claim that that's equal to zero as well. Um, there's again sort of a cheap way to do that, and that's because we know that the div of a curl is equal to zero, and we could use this equation, okay? Or we could just go ahead and say, okay, d of d alpha equal, oops, equals d of, hey, don't I have a d alpha up here somewhere? An explicit version of that? Um, oh yeah, that's this guy. 
right? That's d of alpha, where alpha, where this is where p dx plus q dy plus r dc is alpha. So I can just put that in there, right down here. Okay, let me move it up a little bit. Okay, and so and then I just have to say, oh yeah, d of a two form. That's the divergence, and so it's going to be this guy sub x. Remember, it's the variable that's missing here. And I'm just basically reiterating this computation that ended up here. OK, it's that sub x plus, um, let's see, oh yeah, plus this sub y plus this sub z all times that did weird things. Sorry, that kind of flashed in a weird way. Times dx. Oh yeah, here we are. Let's copy this. Times dx which dy which dz. It's a three form. It's the kind of thing we want to integrate over a uh, a blob. And r y sub r. This is just r y x, and then here's an r x y with a minus sign. And similarly, they all cancel in pairs, and you get zero. Again, the anti-symmetry. These minuses were coming from the first d alpha, and then the other d doesn't actually have any minus signs. Minus signs. The way that the um, the x, y, the cyclic order worked out, but then Clairaut's theorem comes in and produces some commutativity, and it all cancels out to zero. Okay. Um, let me separate out number four into yet another video.